Hi, it's Paul Browning from HowToNetwork.net. I'm going to give you a tour of our brand new rack of live Cisco CCNA level routers and switches, which are at racks.howtonetwork.net. So when you visit that URL now, it'll take you straight to the home page and it'll give you a brief overview of the sort of things you can configure on the routers and the switches. First page you'll want to visit as a new visitor is the How It Works page. You can click on the link at the top which will take you through to a video tutorial. There's a free one for anyone who wants to have a look. There's a full training program when you join How to Network which will teach you how to access all of the equipment, how to get the best out of it, how to do a lot of troubleshooting. So for now we'll just have a quick look at the prices page here. Access to the rack is free for members of How to Network. You get 10 slots which is 10 one hour slots for free. You can book them in slots of one hour, two hours, three hours, or whatever you like. If you run out of time, you can bump up your hours and it works out at about $2 per hour. We've got an advanced topology. I recommend, if you're fairly experienced, to have a play with the advanced topology. You've got five main routers all connecting to a frame relay router in the middle. And router number five's got all DCE interfaces and it's got several interfaces there. We've also got a switch at the back end for all the routers to connect to so you can practice your VLANs. And underneath it tells you what model the routers are and the iOS. I recommend for the first couple of sessions and if you're a novice you just use the basic CCNA level rack. So you've got router 1 and router 3 both connecting to router 2 in the middle there. That's called a hub and spoke configuration and it lets you configure your routing and also we've got another switch so if you want to practice your VLAN you're more than welcome. When you become more confident you can configure trunking between two switches, lots of VLANs and more exciting stuff and there's lots of labs on howtonetwork.net that will show you how to do that. Okay so what I suggest we do is log in You'll be given your username and password when you register as a member of How to Network and after you've completed the training program. Very simple, it's just a set of videos and training training things that will just make life a lot easier for you when you're using the rack. So I'm going to log in with my username and password. If you forget it, you can click on the bottom and get a password reminder. We've got no session scheduled at the moment and our homepage will always show us which sessions we've got coming up. So we're going to go to the book session and it's an online calendar which will take you through the next several months. I'm going to click on the basic rack because this is it's just a, a simple walkthrough for you to get a flavour of, of how easy it is to use the rack. The light purple book sessions have been booked by the people in the past. The dark purple that are in the grey area have been booked by you in the past. And the current time, you configure this in your preferences when you first log in. I'm in the UK at the moment, we're in GMT, Greenwich Mean Time plus one hour. It's almost two o'clock in the afternoon, so what I'm going to do is book a one hour session starting at two o'clock. Click on the times that you want and the days you want, click on book session. It tells me I've got six slots left, I can use those at any time I want, there's no time limit. Click on the home page and now it will tell me that I've got a session booked. If I book several different days, they'd all be listed here. So it's now 1.56 in the afternoon and my session starts at 2 o'clock. So I've got four minutes just to have a, a look at another part. Once you've logged in, you can actually go, go ahead and buy some extra slots. The minimum is 10 slots and it'll cost you 20 bucks, $20, which is about £10 for 10 hours access to the equipment. If you buy more and more slots you get a, a greater and greater discount. You can pay with your credit card or you can pay with your PayPal account. So time has magically passed now and it's just gone 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm going to go ahead and click on start. You can cancel the session but you need to do it a day or so before it's due to start. A new window's opened and it's given you a countdown, a calendar, and a topology of the rack you're using. I do hope you'll you'll print this out so it'll make it a lot easier when you're configuring. And it says there to access the device please click on the diagram. So I'm going to click on router 2 and it will very cleverly open up a hyperterminal window on my PC. 
as part of the training process on how to network we'll show you how to use some advanced uh, putty programs and other things so you can make it a lot easier and so you can open multiple windows at the same time but just for now we're going to have a little play and we're going to stick to hyperterminal to make it nice and easy the router is blank so we're going to enable mode and I always like to type a show version so I'll just confirm I'm on the correct router it's got the correct iOS release and it tells you how many interfaces are connected we can see some various information, standard information about this router, the configuration register, and we can see we've got one fast ethernet and two serial interfaces. We're interested in serial one slash zero, and as you can see on the diagram, that's the router that connects to router three. So I thought it might be fun just to configure a connection, a link between router two and router three. Just so we don't get confused, we'll name our routers and this one I'm going to cunningly name router2 I'm going to type a show controllers serial 1 forward slash 0 the show controllers command will tell you what sort of cable you've got plugged in the diagrams telling me it's a DCE cable and the router output is also confirming that yes it is a DCE cable so you may well already know that the DC end needs a clock rate adding. That will give us the clocking for the connection between the two routers. So I'm going to go into config mode, interface serial 1 forward slash 0. I'll pop on an IP address, nice and simple, 192.168.1.1 and a 24-bit mask. There's loads and loads of labs on howtonetwork.net that you can use on all of this kit. I'm going to put in a clock rate of 64,000 bits per second and type no shut which should bring up the interface. I won't be able to connect across yet to router 3 because we haven't connected to router 3. So I've closed type of terminal, clicked on router 3 and what I want to do is put an IP address onto router 3. And here we are again. The user mode so I want to go into config T I'm going to put a host name on here just call it router 3 the interface on router 3 according to the diagram is serial 0 slash 0 so I'll configure that pop in an IP address uh, this is 192.168.2 again with a 24 bit mask press enter I'll type no shut on this to bring it up So that should have brought the interface up. Type show IP interface brief. I always like to type this just to see the state of the interfaces. And it's telling me my serial interface is up, up, which is a very good sign. I should now be able to ping router 2, 12.168.1.1, and fingers crossed it works and it does so we've had five successful pings so what we've done is configure the network between router 2 and 3 obviously do loads more when you've when you've logged in but thanks for watching